Sharon Bryant for MMA Heat. Uh, this is a little bit intimate right now. We're here with Kyle Kingsbury at his mom's place. He's cutting some weight, and um, and 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 I'm not looking below the waist, just for for the sake of my own safety. Um, <laughs> Kyle, how much weight do you have to go? And and we're we're a few hours out from weigh-in. We're about four hours out. So how far do you have to go? Well, I only got another nine pounds to lose to get me to 208. Then I'll throw on a sauna suit, get the sweats on, and just let it relax, let it come out that way for the next few hours while we wait around and, and just kind of hang out there at the shark tank waiting to get on stage. Nice. And so exactly what are we doing here? Obviously, this is a tub. How hot is it? How long have you been in this this morning? It's pretty hot. It's been about 15 minutes in there. Uh, we got Epsom salt, and uh, that's about it. Hot water and Epsom salt does the trick for me. I can lose uh, about eight pounds in an hour. And uh, I got 90 goes, so I'll probably stay in for an hour and 10 and call it a day. How long have you been doing this in, in terms of cutting weight this aggressively? <laughs> oh, here comes mom. Hi, no, come on in, mom. How are you? <laughs> oh, I thought he, he is. No, he, he's. <laughs> I told him I wouldn't look. I'm, I'm keeping the eyes up, Mom. I'm keeping the eyes up. <laughs> yeah, I'm the husband. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Hell didn't marry a man. Anyway, it's California. What the hell? Get the hell out of here, Ma. What are you doing? Give me some meatloaf. You want meatloaf? No, that was a joke. Okay. Movie reference. All right, Ma. This is great. Your mom's a great sport about this. She's been uh, obviously a, a supporter of your of your athletics for years and years. Yeah. Years and years since I was nine playing football. She's mom's always had my back. Nice, very nice. So yeah, so, so how long have you been doing this? Let's get back to that question in terms of cutting weight. I know you played football, but you also are a wrestler, right? So how many years has it taken you to perfect this method? Well, I first started having to cut weight when I was ten for Pop Warner football, and we'd weigh in that same day. So, but it was only a couple pounds. Now, obviously. Uh, when I started fighting, I fought as heavyweight, so I really didn't have to worry about cuts. And then when I got to AKA, uh, Bobby Southworth, an old teammate of mine, took me under his wing. He was like, dude, you get to 230, we can get you to, to 205. And I was like, no way. And he said, I cut from 240. And so he really you know, mentored me and showed me a lot about weight cutting. And from there, I kind of added some of my own tricks. And uh, Christoph Jasinski taught me a little bit about it as well. And, and finally, working with Victor Conti has really paid off because he's you know, showed me a lot of the science behind uh, how to take it off and how to put it back on properly. And that is it's so interesting because to me it's it's stunning that somebody can walk around 15 pounds heavier you know the day before and cut it but it really is as simple as water. Oh it is it is that simple it's about knowing your body too I've, I've trained myself to get used to this so every Sunday I come over to mom's I do a practice weight cut where I'll drop eight to ten pounds put it back on and then spar hard Monday so my body gets used to that taking something off putting it back in and then going hard the next day and uh, now when I get to the weight cut day water comes off easy I put it back on easy and I go out there and put on a good show so when you walk around then when you're not fighting you don't have one upcoming how big are you uh, I'm about 2.30 when I'm walking around. If I fatten up, I can get up to 2.45. But uh, in shape, 2.30. I'll lean down to 2.25 and, and cut from there. So it's about been about a 20-pound cut all in all by the time I get on the scale. Yeah, I have to say you're lucky. I feel bad for the guys on the card right after Thanksgiving. Good timing, my friend. <laughs> Perfect timing. I was complaining I didn't get to go out and party with my friends on Halloween. You know, Obviously, all the ladies like to uh, uh, wear a little bit on Halloween. But, but uh, the fact that I get to have Thanksgiving dinner and Christmas dinner, that more than makes up for it. Absolutely. Now, do you need to get back in? Or are you? Okay. Okay. Here, I'll let you slide down. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We've got Alexander from the shoot over here. We've got Al Fuentes, and Al is, is of course, his uh, his mental coach. Actually, I should ask you a question for a second. How how do you think Kyle is feeling going to this fight, and and you know how's he compared to the last few fights he's had? Because he's on a bit of a winning streak. Yeah, he's doing really good. He's probably in his best mental state ever, and that's usually what happens is it just keeps getting better and better. And you know his weight, he, he's probably one of the best people I've seen in managing his weight and cutting his weight, and he does it with very little effort and little uh, physical exertion, which is perfect. And um, he prepares. Uh, ahead of time with uh, previous just simple cuts, nothing big. And, and so he's really doing well. He uh, continues to reset every night and recharge himself and getting the right amount of sleep, getting his mind clear, and just allowing himself just to relax, which is really important. It's all about the relaxing. Right, I'm going to come over and bother him again, though, and not let him relax. So let's talk a little bit about this fight. People are saying that you might have fight of the night uh, with Stefan Bonner. What do you think? Well, I'm, I'm hoping for it. I think... <laughs> I think when they picked this fight, they were they had that in mind, you know, the powers that be. So uh, 
then you take a look at the main card and you go, holy shit, look at all these guys. You got Martin Cam and Rick Story. I mean, the second I saw that, I was thinking those guys really, you know, they, they could have fight of the night. And then also Uriah and Ryan Bowles, you know, they're going to go balls out in there and, and leave it all on the line for the number one contendership. So, um, you know, that's out of my hands how those guys perform. But being the first fight of the main card, I'm going to go out there and put on the best performance I can and, and just keep my fingers crossed that all the other fights suck. <laughs> Well, and I saw you, well, I'm falling off your tub here. Um, I think it was 126 when you had a knockout in uh, 20 something seconds, right? So, uh, and it was great that night. You didn't even break a sweat. It was great. It was nice for you. But I just mentioned you're on a bit of a winning streak. Has, has your camp been consistent? Has it been the same? Uh, you know, did you find something that works and you didn't tweak it? Or have you been making changes all along the way and just finding things that are still working for you? Well, there's obviously we're keeping the stuff that works, getting rid of the stuff that doesn't. One thing we added in was uh, we have a new Muay Thai coach named Jasper at AK that we've all been working with. And he's been great. He's been showing me stuff that has been on par or better than anybody that, you know, anything that I've learned over in Phuket when I went to train out in Thailand. So having him on staff has been awesome. And I'm, I'm looking forward to showing some new skills. And and uh, we've also sharpened up some of the things I already had. So he's, he's been able to help me perfect my knees a little bit better. And and uh, I continue to work with Daniel Cormier, King Mola Wall is there. So we've got some great wrestlers to work with and train with. And everything, everything has been great. This has been one of the best camps that I've had. So knock on, knock on something. <laughs> it's, been, it's been awesome. Well, and it's interesting, too, with Stefan, because I'm curious what, what you do for strategy with him, knowing that he's, he's, he's ready for a war. I mean, do you just go out there and go, hey, well, let's just go out there and, and, and knock it out real fast? Or, or, or do you have to f try to calm him down and try to strategize for a longer fight? Well, there's a certain pace you have to bring, no question. But when you fight a guy who's going to bring it to you, the, the pace is going to be high no matter what. So obviously, you know, there's going to be points where the fight hits the mat. There's going to be points where we're in the clinch and we'll catch our breath when we can, but it's going to be active everywhere. There's not going to be really a place where I can just camp out and say, oh, okay, I feel a lot better now. Let me back up and start the fight again. You know, the fight's going to take place the whole time, every second of every round. And uh, both of us know that we've both trained for that. So that's what, what the fans are going to see. Yeah, it's interesting. Everybody just knows that about him. I think, I, I, you know, that's great that it's his hallmark, but I think it's kind of dangerous too, you know, but... What are you going to do? Well, what are you going to do? You know, coming off of a uh, fight of the night, my last one, I got that fractured orbital. I was thinking it's nice to get the bonus, but how many of these, how many of these fights can I go through? I might have a short career. And, uh, you know, I look up to Stefan. I've looked at him, you know, since, since uh, that fight with Bonner or with uh, Griffin, where everybody saw it and, and, and really put us on the map as a sport. And it's uh, one of those things where I really want to model my career after his. You know, I want to be a guy where – People look at me and say, that guy's exciting. He's a fun guy to watch. And that's exactly what Stefan has going for him. This is exciting and fun to watch you in the bathtub. I'm just gonna just gonna be honest with you. Everybody knows my husband is a cameraman. It's, I'm allowed to. I'm allowed to. Okay, if this was Ariani and Shandell in the tub, I think it, you'd be pretty happy as well. We're put that <laughs> yeah, let's make that happen. Exactly. You know, you made a good point a second ago about putting the the sport on the map. And last weekend with the Fox Show, it was all about that. And this card got a little bit overlooked. And I feel like in the last few days, all these people all of a sudden are going, "Holy crap! This card is ridiculously good." How do you feel about the sport making it to Fox? And did you feel slighted at all with the with the press leading up to this fight and and do you have a point you want to prove oh that's a lot yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um you know i really love the fact that that we got the fox deal it's huge for everybody you know and and really there's going to going to be so much more to come from that really this is in a seven-year deal think of all the fights all the possibilities they can have on that they can have gsp fight on there they can have anderson silva they're going to showcase our best guys on that so that's that's a great deal on itself um Media attention, you know, this is, like I said, my first fight on the main card, so I'm actually getting more media attention than I ever have before, and uh, it's okay, I'm prepped for it, so I've been just working through the interviews and, and having fun with it the whole time and enjoying every part of the experience. Nice. nice, and yeah, so you don't feel like this card got slighted at all, or that there was not enough attention on it? There's definitely a little bit of people, you know, going through under the radar, and I think that they're doing a better job of trying to say, hey, look at this card, we're, we're stacked top to, top to bottom, and um, I think as the fight approaches tomorrow with, with uh, all the buzz that's going around, it's going to get up to where it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so as well, and it helps that it's here in San Jose, and you have guys like Kung Lee on the card, and you, and 
What do you think about Kung's return? It's been well over a year since he's fought, and right? Yeah, it was a while ago that he took on Scott. And I'm just curious how, about the transition. Obviously, you've seen him in the gym, and you know what he can do. But how do you think it's going to go when he's actually staring down Vanderlei Silva? Well, Kung's my man. You know, we train at AKA together, and, and uh, not only does he have a good shot, but um, I think he's going to win. And I'm not just saying that because I have to. Uh, he's very prepared. He, he's been sparring with King Mo this whole camp, and King Mo is just on a whole nother level. You know, he's he's definitely a top five fighter in the world. And so when you have somebody like that to work with day in and day out, it really rubs off on you. And Kung's very prepared. It's going to be a great fight. Yeah, and we should also say, too, that obviously you're very close uh, to the situation with Cain Velasquez. There was a lot of pressure put on him, I thought, last weekend. And um, he, everybody knows, oh, Cain will be back, Cain will be back. But I mean, but... What did you think about going into that for, for him? Do you think that was a lot to ask somebody who hadn't fought in a year and coming off an injury to go and fight on such a big scale? Well, it definitely was. You know, Kane had no problem doing that. That's him. He wants the weight of the world on his shoulders. He, 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 he likes the pressure situation. That's what you say going into the fight, you know, but then you're getting put on TV left and right. You have more media attention than you ever thought possible. I mean, think of the pressure he had against Brock. And magnify that by 10, you know, with the first first fight on Fox, he's got to defend the belt instead of coming in unknown as a challenger. So really, the, the role had reversed, you know, and it was, you know, nothing to, not to take anything away from Junior. He's a very deserving champion. He's one of the best in the world for sure, and he's the, he is the best in the world today. But, um, yeah, Kane is going to be back, and, and when he does come back, he's going to be better prepped for that. He's going to be ready for it, and he's going to be ready to go in there and hold that belt for a long time like he hoped to. Very nice. And obviously the main event fight has a lot of implications on your weight class, 205. A lot of people argue that that's the toughest class going. Um, so so what do you make of Shogun versus Hendo? What do you make of, of your position in there? You're obviously growing and, and upcoming, but how do you see that division shaking down? And how long do you think that John Jones can be the champ? Well, until I see otherwise, John Jones can hold that belt as long as he wants. You know, he's really... Um He's doing a great job. He's walking through guys that, that have never been walked through before. So uh, all the credit in the world to him. You know, he's looking uh, spectacular, even against Rampage, which was a very hard fight for him. A lot of people were criticizing him and stuff like that. He still came away and finished the guy. And uh, there's something to be said for that. But um, watching this fight with Hendo and, and Shogun, as a fan who watched Pride for years, I'm going to be glued to the screen, you know. And, and people have asked me before who's going to win. I, I really have no idea. I picked Shogun initially, uh, hearing about Hendo's camp and how well it went. I, I, I really don't know. You know, I really have no idea. So it's going to be interesting for sure. I'm excited to see it. Yeah, I'm excited to see it as well. And I, I, I think it could go either way. I can make an argument either way. I know you don't want to look past Stefan, but are there people that you want to fight in, in your aspirations to climb the ladder and, and make a name off of knocking out this guy, knocking out that guy? No, no, no. Nobody. <laughs> nobody. Uh, Seriously, it's it's funny, you know. You come from a college football background, where you've got a, a however many, you know, eleven game schedule, twelve game schedule, whatever. Your schedule's set, and your coach sticks it in your head one game at a time. And whoever you're facing that week, that's all you're thinking about. If we got Stanford one week, we're not thinking about Cal the week after before we play Stanford. And that's when you know your schedule. In the UFC, all you know is the next guy you fight, because whether you win or lose determines who you got after that. And uh, Really, you know, there's nobody on the list for me. There's guys I'm watching, certainly, just because they're coming up the ranks the same way I am. I look at a guy like Alexander Gustafsson, who's just been on a tear. He's only lost it to Phil Davis. I look at Phil Davis, who's, you know, just super accomplished, and I've worked with him as well, and he's he's all that. You spar with the guy, you get to know how he is, and, and Phil Davis is the real deal. So I, I keep my eye on those guys just because of their talent level and just because of what the future may hold. But I don't have anybody that I'm picking out out. You know, oh, hey, Joe, let me get a fight with so-and-so. It's nothing like that at all. I got more than enough on my plate with Stefan Bonner. Yes, you do. Well, it's going to be a great fight, and, um, and thank you for letting us <laughs> take a bath with you. <laughs> thank you for joining us. <laughs> Good luck, and, uh, and I just, yeah, I really am looking forward to it, and I, I think you're doing a great job. It's a four-fight win streak you're on right now, right? Looking to make five, so uh, just keep doing what you're doing. It's working. All right. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Lola. Do you want to take a bath with Papa? Is that what you're doing? Hmm? What are you doing, little bear? Hmm? How did somebody find a part You miss me, little goose? You miss me, cute yeah. boy? Sunny <laughs> yeah, you You missed a part. All right. Old school.
こう